Welcome to Atrium On Air, where we deliver the latest insights and strategies for navigating the world of extended workforce solutions. Join us as our expert guests share their experiences building successful extended workforce programs, leveraging the latest in talent technology, and harnessing the potential of workforce data. Start exploring the modern world of work today with Atrium On Air. Welcome to Atrium On Air. My name is Brad Martin, Atrium's Chief Revenue Officer, and today I'll be hosting the podcast. I am joined today by Justin Lumby, who is TalentNet's Chief Operating Officer, and today we're going to have a dialogue about myths and misconceptions around direct sourcing, and just generally how the concept of direct sourcing has evolved over the years. Justin, it's great to have you on the show today. Welcome. Hey, Brad. Thanks for having me. It's a real, pro- it's a real pleasure. So, Justin, you've been with TalentNet for nearly a decade now. Uh, you've held lots of roles, tech strategy, you were chief product officer, you're now your COO. You've really seen this concept of direct sourcing evolve over the years, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely, Brad. I think going back, you know, 10 years ago, so if I reflect on my time at TalentNet, and even really before that, um, my background previous to TalentNet was really in procurement and human resources within talent acquisition. And originally, there was sort of a basic, I I guess, theory, if you will, um, that we could borrow many of the sort of technology and even operational strategies that exist within talent acquisition and lend them to the contingent uh, workforce sort of world domain. Um, But really, back then, it was it was a much more sort of basic strategy. We, We were dealing with very basic technology and even basic sort of operational best practices. Um, since then, it's, it's really evolved, both from a technical landscape, um, but I think as well in, in terms of the operations becoming more sophisticated, the way that they you know, blend and, and marry up to MSP services um, and with the businesses and clients that they support. And with that, we've seen more demand um, you know, to support sort of evolving and more sophisticated strategies. And that's led the technology to become more, more complex, but more capable as well. Um, and as we look forward, we really think this, you know, becomes sort of a bridge to, not to use a cliche, uh, but perhaps total talent management, where, again, because we're borrowing many of these sort of strategies and tech- technical ideas from talent acquisition, they blend le- nicely then with the full-time talent acquisition world and really become an enabler for those large enterprise clients that are looking now to sort of blend together some of their contingent best practices with with uh, talent acquisition and create some beginning of a total talent strategy. You know, Justin, it's interesting that you mention um, technology and services. Certainly, Atrium and TalentNet have partnered up on several enterprise programs quite successfully. Um, to me, a holistic approach to direct sourcing really is multiple multiple components. It's um, you know, you've got the technology component, you've got curation, you've got payrolling, you've got workforce data intelligence, um, even value add services on top of that, such as recruitment marketing. So to really look at it holistically, it's it's multiple components. But while it seems that the, the concept of direct sourcing has been around for quite some time, it still feels like depending on who you ask, you get a different definition these days. I, I think maybe that's part of what leads to some of the misconceptions about what direct sourcing actually is. So I'm curious, from your perspective, from TalentNet's perspective, how would you define direct sourcing today? Sure, yeah, and I, I think that's a very valid point. Um, you know, maybe just before defining it, I, I think that a lot of that, you know, I guess, difference of opinion or, or differences in definition, a lot of that, I think, arises out of some of the early experimentation that was done with direct sourcing before there really was um, established best practices operationally and strategically. And before, um, you know, we had technology platforms that were sort of capable of supporting um, these strategies. But, you know, from our perspective, you know, defining direct sourcing is is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, one, it's a talent acquisition strategy, generally within the contingent workforce domain, that really focuses on using a large enterprise's brand within as, as a key mm-hmm. tool for that talent acquisition. Right. Um, that there is a, a, a technical solution similar to sort of a candidate relationship management system, or even similar to an applicant tracking system within um, full-time talent acquisition that is being leveraged within that sort of contingent domain. 
And then you've got a sound um, operating strategy, which typically is referred to as a curator within this space and within direct sourcing. Um, and that's much more than, um, you know, maybe just sort of a streamlined recruitment service that's sort of, you know, searching through a database or passively looking at job applicants. It really is a partner to the business um, and, you know, a capable operations and professional services company that's capable with engaging with their customer and ultimately sort of um, being that that brand ambassador, if you will, um, to that corporate brand. Yeah. And, you know, user adoption is so key. Um helping everyone that touches a direct sourcing program, whether it's a manager or, you know, the stakeholders of the program, helping them all understand even basic stuff like what we're talking about right now, um, the definition of direct sourcing, you know, what the program's there to achieve. These are these are core components that everybody needs to understand, um, you know, to drive the success of the program within an organization. You know, if done correctly, direct sourcing really is the number one way to drive hard dollar cost savings within an extended workforce program. And so it's so important to get this right even after, you know, the initial uh, the initial implementation. Justin, there's a lot of, um, you know, I'd say myths or misconceptions about direct sourcing, maybe even just misunderstandings uh, in the marketplace, just beyond the definition of it. I'm curious, what are some of the things that you see in the marketplace that uh, you know are some of these myths or misconceptions, whether that's uh, you know the cost to implement the program or just complexity of standing one up? Yeah, I, I think there's a number of myths, and I, I think you've touched on a couple of them there. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll just go with the second one you mentioned, and um, we can talk about a few more as, as well. So one of them, I think, is around implementation. Um, and the perceived difficulty, perhaps, of implementing a direct sourcing program and getting it right. Because, um, again, um, I guess to sort of acknowledge that and, and maybe where that belief comes from, um, you know, you are typically implementing a technology stack and integrating that into an existing technical ecosystem. Um, you're implementing typically a new uh, professional services partner in, in the form of a curation partner. Um, so, so there are different aspects that you're sort of trying to bring together and, 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 uh, and marry up. But I think the perception of sort of difficulty to implement and to get right I really think that's born out of early days in direct sourcing where, again, there was a lot of experimenting going on. Um, you know, today, both from a technical perspective and the roadmap to implement, um, I mean, that is a tried, tested and true process now. Not to say anything is ever rin rinse and repeat. There's always nuances to it. Right. Um, but it, but it's certainly something where it's a well-established process. And and the same goes, and I would even say it's in, it's in some ways more important is the implementation of the operational strategy behind that. And again, in early days, a lot of experimentation going on, and I think that led to confusion and it led to a perception of this is very difficult to get right. But now we have very established best practices. And not only that, um, but data KPIs that sort of back that back that up where you know new enterprises that are looking at implementing this now um, they can look at other peer enterprises across different industry verticals and really understand what they got right and how they got it right i i do think it's important though to work with a capable partner one that has particular experience in in this space when implementing so you're not sort of going through and and sort of repeating that i guess that period of experimentation yeah you know it feels like one of the the core tenants, the core components of direct sourcing, it always comes up every time we're, we're talking about it, is, is the concept of, you know, a client leveraging the power of their brand to, you know, create these, these talent pools, these strong talent communities, uh, you know, particularly with brands that, that have a lot of brand equity, some of these large brands that, you know, tend to launch uh, big, big direct sourcing programs. I'm curious, in addition to, you know, leveraging their brand, what are some of the other ways that you would suggest a, a company go about uh, helping to build a really strong, you know, talent community? Or would you like to expand upon the, you know, the, the power of the brand concept? Yeah, I, I think the brand component is really important. But what I'll touch on is, you know, sometimes maybe another miss or a misconception um, is that is that direct sourcing is a is a passive strategy or a relatively passive strategy. You know, I'm going to implement this technology stack. I'm going to have sort of a white labeled. Uh, talent community or or portal, if you will, that um, active talent can engage with. 
Um, and, and I'm just going to start sort of engaging talent and sort of bringing them on. And it's, it's going to be that simple. Um, and, and not to say direct sourcing necessarily is complex in its execution, but it is really important, again, that that role of curation, that sort of operational role, that brand ambassador role, um, that is a very active role, both internally within the organization. So socializing the idea that you have a direct sourcing program, um, you know, socializing the benefits within the organization of what that can then provide back to various business units in terms of, uh, as, as you said, you know, real uh, hard dollar cost savings. But it's also, you know, the much broader socialization externally um, to the to the market, right? And what you're really trying to do is create sort of a viral effect um, where as you develop a larger and larger talent pool, as you have more engagement through it, you're almost trying to create a bit of an echo chamber now um, where all of that sort of active talent that's come through this channel, uh, that's very sort of user friendly to them, they felt that they had a brand ambassador sort of, you know, as a custodian to them through the process um, and using that again to sort of amplify the word, if you will, or or, or really push that socialization out. And, th and that is a key role of a curator that goes, you know, far beyond just simply branding um, a talent community or, or, or posting jobs to, you know, social media or job board. Right. It's, it's leveraging all these different channels to, you know, to help fill the talent pool, whether it's manager referrals or silver medalists that uh, you're inviting into the to the talent pool or retirees coming back into the workforce or again leveraging the power of your brand it's all these different channels that you uh, are, are using to to help curate your talent pool so it hits this tipping point uh, where you know suddenly it's useful for the managers and that's when program adoption really really begins to take off um, I'd imagine without the the proper mechanisms in place to you know to help fill the talent pool uh, becomes uh, extremely challenging. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And a, and a talent pool, in many ways, it's it's a living, breathing thing. It it is it is something that is um, rich in data, which I think is a huge benefit. Yeah. Um, in in terms of sort of you know historical engagement trends, um, you know, have we engaged this person in, in in the past? What do we know about them? How successful were they in previous jobs or assignments? Um, but that doesn't just happen on its own. I, again. Um, it's really important that, that that curation partner is sort of active and living in that talent community as, as well. Um, like any other database or anything else, of course, um, if it's not sort of being actively managed, um, you're just not going to see the ROI and the maximum benefit that you can over time. Right. Any other thoughts on how a company might optimize their um, you know, direct sourcing strategy and, um, and program? You know, I, I I think again, it, it's it's you know, I would say the two um, two two really key sort of aspects that we see in some of our most successful customers. So one again is that really capable curation partner, and typically one uh, that has previous experience doing this. Um, not to say that other organizations, you know, aren't ev evolving and, and sort of coming into this space, um, but it's really going to help if you've not done this before to have a capable partner who sort of understands best practices. And again, the second piece that I mentioned before, I think, is, you know, sometimes we see a lack of socialization within mm -hmm. uh, the enterprise, right? Um, and there's no understanding of a, that this program even exists, that this is a, a viable channel uh, channel for me to engage uh, labor, um, but also the benefits um, the benefits sort of to me as, as, a, as a business unit um, and, and what I'm able to be provided. So I think if you can nail those two things, um, you're really going to sort of amplify the, you know, the, the, the ROI that you have over time. Well, Justin, appreciate you joining the podcast today. Um, you know, we had a brief chat, but I think we hit on some pretty um, important topics around direct sourcing. Hopefully, some of this helped to demystify some of these concepts for our audience. Uh, would love it if you'd stop by at a future time to um, join the podcast again and, and dive even deeper into some of these topics. I'd love to, Brad. Thanks again for having me on. This has been Atrium On Air, a podcast sponsored by Atrium. For additional information about Atrium's talent and workforce management solutions, please visit www.atriumglobal.com.